we're extremely fortunate uh, to have and uh, would like to thank Henry uh, very much for. Um, we're and it's something that I am very, very proud of, and I think we all are. Mm -hmm. We all uh, we all work very hard for Morton Buildings to, to get to this point, and we continue to, to do that. Um, I, uh, you had asked Rudy uh, what it's like to work. Uh, I think, what, was, what did you ask uh, Greg here just a few minutes ago? Oh. Number one ranking, or what was that? Yes, you, 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 you folks are the number uh, number one ranking on the performance listing, and uh, the reason I came, one of the reasons I came up here, I want to find out what makes you tick. So, who's this handsome fellow on your right there? <laughs> is, it, is he the one that causes all this, or? No, no. It, no, you're yeah. not, huh? We're together as a team, and, and uh, everybody gets along in this office pretty well. So. Okay. And you are known as uh, Dirk? Dirk. Yes, Dirk. Okay. okay, and who's that fellow to your right? This is Brian Crawley, uh, job coordinator. Hi, Brian. Hello. And on your left, Brent, uh, starting out here with the uh, better looking one of the two. <laughs> Thank you, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like being compared to a woman, but I'll take a compliment anyway. <laughs> Uh, Karen. Can be changed. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hi, Rudy. And that handsome devil behind you with all the hair is uh, Greg, right? Greg Stadler. Hi, Greg. Hello, Rudy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh, no, I, can't, I have no complaints. <laughs> None. And uh, then we have... Uh, Neil Mac Weeblehouse. Hi, Neil. Hi, Rudy. And... Uh, Marcy. Marcy. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? And then we got uh, somebody in a white shirt and a tie. He must be important. <laughs> well, I think I am. I no. Nobody else really does. He must be from estimating. <laughs> he must be from estimating, okay. Scott Lane. I'm a design estimator based here in Exonia. So uh, who, who's going to uh, speak for the group and, uh, and uh, shares with the world uh, what you attribute your success to? I think part of, the, part of the, what can be attributed to success is surrounding yourself with successful people and lots of buildings. Um, if you're surrounded by successful people, you strive to be like them. And um, you know, when Brent is a top salesman in the company, it's not hard to find somebody that you want to try to catch up to. So, yeah. so I'd say surrounding yourself with successful people is a big part of the equation. Good crew, for, good good crew, in, okay. and lots of good-looking buildings. Okay. Anybody else? And, it's, and, you know, not only the secretaries, too, I myself, I've been able to, as we were talking earlier, I try to not spend as, uh, a lot of time in the office here. And I really don't have to because I have Karen here to really keep the ship upright. And uh, uh, that's very helpful. I mean, it's been extremely helpful to me over the years to be able to be out in my territory and, you know, not really having to worry too much about what's going on at the office here and trying to keep my fingers on everything around here because, um, to be honest with you, I don't have, you know, there's just not enough hours in the day to, to do that and uh, do the amount of selling that I do and so on. Uh, that has a lot to do with my success too. And also, I mean, the crews, uh, having Greg Taylor here as a supervisor, uh, it really is a team approach, you know, throughout, you know, for the sales and crew and everything. And uh, uh, that all boils down to uh, more efficiency. And uh, I, I think we all get together, get along together here. And, and it is a team approach, and uh, I think that's a lot to do, has a lot to do with our success here. Well, I, um, I guess uh, I'd like to compliment you all on on a super job. It's not easy to keep all these people busy. It's not easy to uh, get into the position that you're in, and it took a lot of hard work, and I certainly rec recognize it, and I want to compliment you for it. And besides that, you got one hell of a nice office here. Thank you. So, yeah. thanks for putting up with me and putting this little commercial together. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It didn't hurt, did it? Okay, Brent, what was you telling me about this car? Well, I, I got this car in uh, about June of 96. Uh-huh. And uh, so this is five years now I've been driving this car, and so... Uh, I've written about $25 million worth of orders out of this car. 
25 million dollars worth of oil yeah, out of this it's car. It's got 140,000 miles on it, and uh, so, uh, so this, maybe, car, this car has been good to us. So maybe maybe when you're all done with it, we'll put it in a museum, huh? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Actually, I think it's the black color that does it. It's the black color. So you recommend that all sales cars should be should be changed to black color? No, I just I'll I'll keep a black car that way I can be different from everybody else. So yeah, right. It works for me anyway. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brent, put a, a take the mystery out of Exonia. Exonia is uh, is the uh, what what's the word here? It's the uh, it's the town everybody talks about. The uh, uh, how big is this Exonia? Well, uh, Exonia is an unincorporated uh, town. It really isn't a village or a city or a town for that matter. Uh, it's what's called unincorporated, so it doesn't have any listed population. Uh, there's probably maybe 100 people that live right right around in a, maybe a half mile from our office. Uh, I just took you down through downtown Exonia, which includes well, one, one, one post office and two bars. That. Uh, this is a 54 by 18 by 105. Uh, he's into sale, mainly leasing of uh, heavy construction equipment. The stuff we see there on the corner there. Uh, this building has uh, Nova brick uh -huh. uh, as a wainscot and uh, up to the soffit line around the, around the vestibule. Uh, the reddish material is uh, Stenex or Steny panel. But you, you put the town of Exonia on the map with this building right here. Yeah, it's a nice building. It's yeah. uh, everything on this building is right in the price book, uh, but it, uh, it turned out very nice. Yeah. All right. Put a little bit on tape here from uh, remembering what you told me, but this is a million-dollar mini storage complex site. Is that right? Right. There's uh, 15 different Morton building structures will be going on this property. Uh, this gentleman's developing this all at one time. Going to build all the buildings uh, at the same time which is kind of unusual for mini storage. Usually they'll start out slow, build a, you know, three, four maybe buildings and then get them uh, filled up and then build some more. Uh, this gentleman's gonna go in, go into the whole thing with both feet uh, and, and the it, ice water, as you yeah, say. Yeah, right. Um, this is right along the uh, I-94 here. I-94 uh, heading uh, eastbound into the city, into Milwaukee area. We're in the city of Waukesha right now, western suburb. Um, this site is uh, quite wet. Uh, we had soil borings done, uh, quite a bit of topsoil and uh, high groundwater, so uh, we're stripping the topsoil off, uh, putting in uh, compacted fill. Uh, there'll be a, a, at least two feet uh, thickness of three quarter inch uh, uh, limestone traffic bond base on top of this. And then all the buildings are sitting on uh, monolithic grade beam slabs. Uh, uh, because of the, mainly because of the soil conditions, uh, if we drilled down four feet, we'd be in water. So yeah, uh, yeah. we're going to float them on concrete. Yeah. Take a look at behind you here. Yeah. That is an old landfill. It's an old city dump. Really? And this, uh, my customer is around the corner here, off on the side of this, and his old building. The back end of his property was in part of the uh, landfill, uh -huh. and the back end of the building was actually sinking, and it sunk about two feet. Really? So, and yeah. so what the city has done is they're, uh, they are capping this landfill with clay that you see now, and they're going to put uh, a park and like soccer fields and ball diamonds out there. All right. They bought, uh, basically bought this property for the, my customer, paid for all the site grading, are paying for the demolition of his old old building and are paying for a good chunk of the construction of this building. Yeah, yeah. And um, okay, so that's, 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 that's going to be a tire store and a muffler shop. Right. Right here, and this is Walker Show, yeah? This is the city of Walker Show. Yeah. Hello, Randy. Good. Long well, time no see. I haven't seen you since uh, the dairy barn in Broadhead. No. That, you were planting lowers, remember that? And I've so, put a couple up since then, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Brent's trying to slush that corner off over there. That's crew error. You didn't do that up there, did you? Well, I just thought I'd do redecorating it. I didn't like the way it looked before. I had to yeah. remodify that. Somebody run into it, huh? <laughs> yeah, big backhoe. Yeah, okay. I already charged him for it. Yeah. You're, you're about done, are you? Well, the outside went for material, but yeah. You're doing the inside on that too? Yes, sir. With total turnkey. 
turnkey except for the site work when blacktop, which the city is doing. And you're going all the way up with uh, Nova Brick. Is that is that a pain? Yeah. Uh, what kind of a pain? It's real time consuming. Is it really? It looks good when you're done, but it's real time consuming. But I don't know how are you going to fasten those uh, d -d -d awnings? They could drill through that brick. Yeah. Yeah, it's just light aluminum. I mean, they're, they're not going to break the brick. Well, they don't have to drill at all, like with a masonry drill, I suppose. So those bricks across the windows over here, they they are just screwed on to the backing, right? There's no level in there. Either. Well, I've got the same stuff we, that we run our bottom on. You got to put that above the window too. Yeah. There's a there's a metal bracket that we start our starter course on the bottom. Yeah. Are you uh, are you aware of what happened in New York this morning? Yeah, I went down and finished the job down there that Jindro driving. That ain't our fault either. What did, uh, okay, I'm gonna turn the camera off. You are uh, you like Noble Brick, right? It looks good. It looks, looks just good. like real brick. And the uh, color combination here, Grant, that's an excellent uh, combination or Whoever picked it out. Like, yeah, this is a uh, stock color. Stock color. Uh, and so, uh, it works well with the charcoal and silver. The, the one problem with Nova Brick is we are quite limited on colors. Uh, but this color looks good with charcoal and silver. The desert tan looks good with our beige and ivories. Right. Uh, other than that, I'm not real wild on the, on the other combinations. But yeah. uh, what's great but, about Nova Brick is that it's one less subcontractor because our crews can do it. Uh, it's mortarless. Uh, so if you have any damage to the building, you need to re ever replace it. Uh, our crews can do that work for our customers. You don't have to worry about uh, trying to match orders and colors if you have a repair. And what, what we, uh, if I get the, uh, the drift of this, we should sell more of this because it is such a good product. Yes, it's not. It's not. It's not going to replace brick and other masonry products. Yeah, but, but, but it is another alternative, and it's an alternative when the color scheme is right, that I think is, a, is an excellent choice. And it's doable and it's not restricted to anything. You right. mentioned there's no uh, footing required. Right. There's no uh, no uh, seasonal restriction on this. Correct. It can be done year-round. Uh, uh, northern climates here. Uh, it, is, it is an ideal, ideal siding here for a light commercial building right on Front Street. Exactly. Uh, and you like it because uh, it goes together easy? Yeah, it's just, yeah, it And looks, you make looks... a hell of a lot of time on here? No. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that in. Yeah, now. I know. I'll <laughs> tell you, no, it's real time consuming, but it does look good. I've had people walk up down the street here. They, they want to know what it is. They like it. They want to put it on their house. They want to put it on their house. He says, can I put it on the house? Says, yes, you so, can. You just, you know. So we got we to gotta find a way to promote this. Uh, promote this more and uh, get, get people to use more of it. That's what we got to do, right? Got any pointers how to do that? Well, just sell more, I guess. Sell more, okay. Brent, it, well, it's right in the price book. Uh, right in the price book. Uh, you know, the Wayne's code is right in the price book. If you want to go higher like I've done here, uh, that can be done. Uh, you just need to have a DE involved. Yeah, yeah, it's got it well to help you get your price for that. Yeah. Well, it looks good, guys. Yeah, this is a humongous column. Uh, it's a three ply two by ten column with a siphoner on it. Now this building is uh, 45 wide by I think 90 feet long. And uh, in Wisconsin we have a uh, high wind load requirement. And Whoa. this building was not able to be put in what's called diaphragm wind loading, so we're in wind frame, and so we end up with some big columns. And you had to go down seven feet there down yeah, in the ground. There's a seven-foot embedment on this. Yeah. Wow! And then, uh, then look at this base plate there. That's a two by ten as well. And you're you're going to put nine inches of insulation in there, or six? Uh, this six. is six in this building. Six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had given him the option to go nine. But yeah. They felt they've got an air makeup system in here with the uh, repair and uh, with all the air exchange and anything. They just didn't feel, feel it was worthwhile yeah. spending the money. So this is what a uh, what a column stiffener looks like. I don't know whether uh, whether folks have any idea what a column stiffener looks like. 
They know it's in the price book, and they know that it stiffens up the column, but I don't like it. Most people probably never seen one, so. Thanks for the infomercial here. Yeah, I've built buildings that have five ply two by four columns. Is that right? Yeah. Well, this is four, four ply down here. Yeah, and for those of you that have never seen an attic draft stop, that's how that is then with, uh, what is that, uh, gypsum board? Half inch or five inch? Just half inch. It's, half inch. There's no fire rating requirements, so right, you can use... Uh, just keeping out the draft from one section into another, huh? Correct. Slow the fire down. And all that oil is beat up along the wall here is uh, the backer for the... Uh, Deep fascia or eyebrow? Deep fascia. Deep fascia. Deep fascia. It has a four and a half mm -hmm. foot deep fascia on it. So. Right. What did you say the term act is for up there? Just to block off the... Same as the OSB. I see. I see. I see. Okay. I see. Okay. Okay. We ran out OSB. We had to have the office to buy an OSB. So, so where does the ceiling go? Directly under the cord? Yep. Mm -hmm. A seal. Seal. And then the front where the offices are is uh, stripping. Right. And uh, and your steel, what, what does, it go, does it run lengthways across the court? Yeah, length, well, it's perpendicular yeah, right. to the court. Mm -hmm. Tie back up along the eave. And another quality energy performer, huh? Used for tire muffler shell in Waukesha, Wisconsin.